Very good evening and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued today law number 11 of 2019, approving the general state budget of 2019 to 2020 after its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia today to head the Bahraini delegation participating in the Emergency Gulf Cooperation Council and the Arab Leaders Summit and the 14th Islamic Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation held in Mecca in response to the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Majesty was received at King Abdulaziz International Airport by the advisor of custodian of the two holy mosques, Governor of Mecca, His Royal Highness Prince Khalid Al Faisal bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the Secretary General of the Gulf Corporation Council, Dr. Abdullah Fazayani, Bahrain's Ambassador to the Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ahmoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Saudi Arabia's Ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh. His Majesty the King witnessed a presentation prepared by Saudi Arabia of the wreckage of Iranian missiles and weapons provided by Iran to the Iranian Houthi militia, which Saudi Arabia was attacked with. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King then gave the following statements. His Majesty expressed thanks to the custodian of the two holy mosques for the invitation to participate, along with Gulf Corporation Council and Arab leaders in the Gulf and Arab Emergency Summit and the Islamic Summit. His Majesty noted that holding these summits reflects the wise leadership of the Saudi monarch and the leading role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in protecting national security and developing joint Arab action leading joint Islamic action and its contribution to strengthen Arab and Islamic unity to deal with all issues and overcome current challenges that threaten the, region, the region's security and stability. His Majesty expressed confidence that these summits will be a new and powerful stage of cooperation, solidarity and integration at the Arab and Islamic levels to achieve the aspirations of the people and in accordance with the region's country's potentialities and resources to become the most advanced countries. His Majesty the King wished the summit success in achieving the desired goals. Earlier, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had departed Bahrain heading to Saudi Arabia to chair Bahrain's delegation to the Emergency Gulf Cooperation Council and Arab Leaders Summit at the 14th session of the Islamic Summit Conference hosted by Mecca in response to the invitation he received from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Majesty was bid farewell at the Sakhir Air Base by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Premier. بن سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, has participated in the preparatory meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers for the 14th session of the Islamic Summit Conference, held under the title Mecca Summit Hand in Hand for the Future in Jeddah. The meeting discussed the issues on the Islamic Summit's agenda to be held on Friday in Mecca and the draft resolution presented to the summit on the Palestinian issue. The foreign ministers also discussed the final statement that will be issued at the end of the summit and which will address all issues of concern to the Islamic countries, the most important of which is strengthening cooperation to meet the various challenges, combating violence, extremism and terrorism, as well as other political, economic and development issues. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and member of the Council of Ministers of Saudi Arabia, Adil bin Ahmed Al Jubair, on the sidelines of their participation in the preparatory meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers for the 14th session of the Islamic Summit Conference. The meeting was part of the continuous consultation and close coordination between the two countries. They discussed the issues on the agenda of the Islamic Summit Conference, exchanged views on Arab regional and international matters and emphasize continuing coordination on all issues and the pursuit of the two countries' consistent approach and efforts to enhance security and stability in the region and the world. 
Sheikh Khalid also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, Don Permodwini, and expressed Bahrain's pride in friendly relations with Thailand. He also noted the keenness of the two countries on developing coordination in various regional and international issues, in addition to strengthening all aspects of cooperation in order to support their interests. He hailed the friendly relations between Bahrain and Thailand, which reflects the common will to promote them to reach higher levels in all fields, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. Prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Rento Marsudai. Sheikh Khalid underlined the deep friendship between the two countries and which is witnessing progress and prosperity on all levels, expressing the aspiration of the kingdom to strengthen bilateral cooperation and develop coordination in various forms to serve the interests of the two countries and their friendly peoples. Marsudi noted the advances in the relations between the two countries that meet their aspirations, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The delegations of the participating countries in the Mecca summit began to arrive in Jeddah in response to the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, had arrived to participate in the three summits. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi also arrived in the inn to participate in the Emergency Arab Summit and the Islamic Summit. A delegation from Morocco also arrived to attend the Arab and Islamic Summit, and a delegation from Oman arrived to participate in the three summits. Earlier, both the uh, Senegalese president and the Algerian prime minister arrived in Jeddah. May 30th marks the day that the two emergency summits called on by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdelaziz al Saud, convene. In preparation, flags of Arab League, Saudi Arabia and other participating countries have been placed along several routes in the Mecca venue. Heavy security is in place at several vital points and in the vicinity of the location. A state-of-the-art media center has also been set up for the utmost proficiency of media collaboration and access in order to have all necessary tools to communicate the agenda and the summit's results transparently to the public who is keenly awaiting this regional power meeting. A giant screen has been installed to telecast live the proceedings of the summit from the venue. A large number of media persons from across the world will be covering the event. It is important to mention that the summit holds paramount importance in the wake of recent attacks that have targeted civilian areas and Muslim holy sites in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as well as the cowardice attack on ships in the territorial waters of the United Arab Emirates and the Iran-backed Houthi militia's drone attacks on two oil pumping stations in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, all of which have serious implications for regional and international peace and security and for the supply and stability of world oil markets. The meetings will be held in conjunction with the upcoming Islamic Summit. According to the statement of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, Ibrahim Abdul Aziz al assaf King Salman has sent an invitation to the leaders of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries and leaders of other Arab countries. The United States has also deployed an aircraft carrier and bombers to the Gulf over alleged threats from Iran. The kingdom's regional allies welcome the Saudi invitation. The current critical circumstances require a unified Arab and Gulf stance. The meetings will be a significant opportunity for these countries of the region to achieve their aspirations for establishing peace and stability. For Bahrain International News Desk, this is Sarah Lebrek. The Emergency Gulf and Arab Summits are due to be held this evening and the 14th Islamic Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation will be held tomorrow. The summits will discuss Iranian threats and security tensions in the Gulf after attacks on four ships and tankers in UAE waters and the attacks on Saudi Arabia by the Houthi militias. It will also focus on the peace process and Arab issues in crisis. The National Information Committee held a meeting today chaired by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Mohammed bin Ibrahim al Mutawa at the Royal Court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister where they reviewed the topics on the agenda in the presence of members of the committee. At the beginning of the meeting, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to all committee members for their efforts. He also thanked all ministries and government agencies for their constructive cooperation with the committee in providing documented information that reflects the 
progress made by the kingdom in sustainable development fields, as well as providing the concerned international organizations with updated information for adopting them, reports and indicators for monitoring various aspects of development in the kingdom. al Mbawa stressed that the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, included the committee in, the, in its interest and continuous follow-up, which contributed in achieving its objectives. He noted that Bahrain has a distinguished record in the development of national indicators, stressing the need for ministries and various government agencies to provide national indicators in various sectors. During the meeting, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, presented the periodic report on the working team concerned with regional and international reports and indicators. The Survey and Land Registration Bureau, the SLRB General Director of Survey, Naji Sept, presented a joint memorandum between the SLRB and the Information and e Government Authority on the use of geographic information systems to provide indicators of sustainable development. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired today the meeting of the Civil Defence Council in the presence of the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Minister of Oil, Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Minister of Health, Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Minister of Information Affairs, Chief of Public Security and the CEO of the Supreme Council for Environment. The Interior Minister welcomed the members, stating that the meeting is aimed at reviewing all plans and procedures to protect general safety and discuss related topics. He asserted the importance of evaluating readiness to ensure the public safety of citizens and residents. He added that the current regional situations and challenges require fulfilling specific procedures to address them. He ordered to continue updating national strategies to deal with emergencies and set plans and proactive scenarios as part of efforts to protect citizens and secure establishments. He noted the launching of awareness programs to educate people on how to react while facing possible situations to ensure the implementation of the required protection and safety steps in the desired manner. The meeting reviewed emergency cases and extraordinary situations, including the allocation of shelters in all parts of Bahrain. The Chief of Public Security was assigned to find suggested sheltering locations and set their specifications. The meeting also discussed the required preparations for crisis and disasters. The General Directorate of Civil Defense was assigned to provide gas masks meeting the approved specifications and determined accredited suppliers. The meeting also discussed necessary preparations including the operation of sirens. The council briefed the meeting on the efforts of the National Disaster Management Committee and topics discussed in its recent extraordinary meeting. The Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the members for their dedication to cooperating and coordinating to enhance the safety and security of the public. The government of Bahrain today announced that the state budget of 2019 to 2020 has been passed into law, demonstrating that the kingdom is committed to realizing the aims of the fiscal balance program and paving the way for strong growth and further fiscal consolidation. Updated forecasts included within the budget demonstrate the government's deficit reduction program is well ahead of schedule with a primary budget surplus forecast for 2020. The state budget law, which was passed by Bahrain's elected chamber of of Parliament will ensure the Kingdom continues to pursue responsible fiscal policy while safeguarding economic growth, job creation and the delivery of essential services for citizens. The Kingdom's path of fiscal consolidation, supported by strong infrastructure spending, has been positively recognized by international bodies and credit rating agencies. With growth gradually strengthening across the region, Bahrain has benefited from increased positive spillovers in areas such as tourism and trade, favorable regional liquidity markets are boosting the availability of capital, positively affecting Bahrain's all share index. Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa stated that the 2019 to 2020 state budget clearly demonstrates that Bahrain is prioritizing sound fiscal and economic policies while safeguarding the continued prosperity of citizens. He hailed the cooperation of Parliament, which continues to play a valuable role in efforts to deliver a strong, sustainable 
sustainable economy. The minister added that the deficit is down by over a third and early indicators show robust GDP growth in the first part of this year, putting the kingdom well on track to deliver a balanced budget in line with the fiscal balance plan 2018-22.